are you going? Where I belong, in the kitchen. Anna, let's talk this out some more. Oh, shut up! You are listening to Confession. Before continuing with the documented record of the woman referred to as Anna Carlson, the National Broadcasting Company is honored to present Mr. Richard A. McGee, Director of Corrections, Department of Corrections, State of California. Mr. McGee. The most dangerous criminals are the adults who behave like children. Psychiatrists call them psychopathic personalities. People with unresolved emotional conflicts, which they act out impulsively. They want what they want, and they want it now. They have a childish disregard for the consequences of their acts. Obviously, prevention and, when necessary, treatment for such persons should begin in childhood. Discipline, not necessarily punishment, but habits of discipline must be instilled in the young if they are to develop into properly adjusted adults. A child's temper tantrum, if uncontrolled, in an adult, can lead to murder. Thank you, Mr. McGee. Now to continue with confession and the documented record of the woman referred to as Anna Carlson. Go ahead with your story, Anna. Ed forgot about Stockton. Sometimes I think if he'd taken the girls in, I might have followed him. I don't know. Anyway, he stayed. Yeah. Go on, please. <clears throat> I've seen Jim Walsh nearly every day now. One night we went to the Rambler Club, nightclub near the ocean. We had some drinks, listened to the music. <laughs> You're awful quiet tonight, Jim. Yeah, yeah, look. Look, I've been figuring. On a good weekend, Barker's got between 50 and 60 grand in the safe. That's been bothering you a lot lately. With that kind of money, we could leave town. Maybe go back east. How'd you like that, Anna? I'd like it a lot more if I was sure you meant it. You do a lot of living on that kind of money. We could do it on a lot less, Jim. Look, if we do it, we do it right or not at all. You understand? It's funny. Till I met you, I made the rules. Yeah, you scared the others. You don't scare me. I know. Maybe that's why I'm not too sure of you. Will you forget it? I'm working out a plan to get that money of Barker's. How? I'll tell you how when I'm ready. Might have to use you. Me? What can I do? You drive a car, don't you? Sure. You can hold a gun, can't you? Now, look, Jim. What's the matter? You scared? I don't know. I have to think about it, I, I guess. I've got to know now. It's important. Well, come on. I'm waiting. I'll do whatever you say, Jim. That's more like it, baby. But I've got to tell you, if we get away with it and you try to pull anything on me... Look, that's a threat. Save it for your husband. Jim wouldn't tell me what he had in mind. He just said it would happen soon. I remember it was Sunday night. August the 19th, about half past 10, when Jim phoned. Ed was home for the weekend. I'll get it. Hello? Anna, I'm at a parking lot on Ivar, right next to the Knickerbocker Hotel. I can't. What's the matter, Ed? Home? Yeah. Look, forget about him. This is it. You know what it means? It's what you wanted, isn't it? I'll be there. I'll be sitting in a black club coupe on the lot. Take a cab. All right. Who was that? A friend of mine's having a little trouble. One of her kids is sick. I'm going to go down and give her a hand. Who is it? Nobody you know. I'll, uh, I'll be back in a couple of hours. Don't bother. What? You walk out that door and you don't come back, get it? All right. That's the way you want it. You're walking out on 10 years of your life, the two kids and me. Why? Like you told me. I just never grown up. It'll be for keeps, Anna. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Maybe. I won't be here. Yes, you will. And you'll open the door to let me in. Mm -hmm. 
I was sure Ed didn't mean it about taking the kids and leaving. He'd said that before and never done it. I took a cab. I got out at Ivar and Yucca, walked the rest of the way. It was a few minutes after 11. There weren't many cars there. I found him right away. Anna, over here. All right, come on, get in. This isn't your car. Where'd you get it? What do you think? Couldn't take a chance using my own. I wish there was some other way. Now, look, this is going to be so easy, baby, you won't believe it. Bark is away. I got the combination to a safe. How'd you get it? Simple. Last five, six weeks, I've been watching him open it. I'd concentrate on one number at a time. Now I got them all. Not bad, huh? You told me he always leaves one of the boys there when he goes away. Yeah, yeah, he left Pete Barnes there. But as soon as Barker left the house, Pete ducked out. I saw him myself. Well, he might come back. For a payoff like this, you got to take chances. Yeah, take this. A gun? What do I need a gun for? Now, look. You park in front of the house. You stay in the car, I go inside. If it looks like anybody's coming, you blow your horn three times. You got that? Then beat it. I'll get out the back way. What about the gun? Will you shut up? Just listen to me. It's Pete who'll get wise when he hears a horn. You fire a shot into the air. That'll make him take cover. It'll give me time. Jim, I'm scared. You're not turning chicken, are you? No, but I'm scared anyway. All right, all right, baby. Now, listen to me. If you have to pull away, ditch the gun. Don't forget it. How? About half a block down the ravine to your right. Toss the gun out the window. You're caught with a gun. It's going to go tough with you. I know. Oh, one more thing. Look, if something goes wrong and they get one of us... Don't talk about the other. You are alone. You understand that? Jim, does it have to be like this? I'm getting tired of hearing you ask that. I should be back in ten minutes. Wish me luck, baby. You mean us, don't you? Okay, wish us luck. I don't know how long I sat there waiting for Jim to come out. Then a car came toward me and slowed down. It turned up Barker's driveway and stopped. I leaned on the horn three times. Man got out of the car and started running towards me. He was almost at the car before I found the nerve to fire the gun. Then I took off. When I drove past a ravine down the block, I slowed enough to throw the gun out. The rest was pretty much the way they had it in the papers. They booked me on a stolen car charge, grand theft auto. Well, at the preliminary, they fixed bail at $1,500. I thought Jim would look after it, but it wasn't Jim. When they let me out in the afternoon, I learned Ed had made my bail. He hadn't come to see me, but he'd fixed the bail. It was around 5 o'clock when I got home. The apartment was empty. Ed and the girls were gone. I went next door and rang the bell at... Eileen's apartment. Hello, Anna. Where's Ed and the kids? They left you, Anna. I'm sorry. That's how much you know about it. Ed put up bail for me. He said to tell you that was his farewell gift. How about some money? Did he leave any money? No. Where's he at? I want to talk to him. I don't know. He didn't tell me. I'll find him myself. And when I do, it'll be too bad for him. Nobody walks out on me like that. Look, Eileen, I need him. Now that he's gone, you need him. You're lost now, Anna, aren't you? No, I'm not. I got where to go. Don't think I haven't, understand? I understand, and I'm very sorry. Now, if you'll excuse me. I got a few things to say to you, too. We have nothing to talk about. Goodbye, Anna. They said I had murder in mind when I went looking for the gun I'd thrown in the ravine near Barter's place. It wasn't so. I just wanted to make sure no one else found it. I didn't want them to have it at my trial. It was Jim's gun. And if they found it, they might be able to tie him in with the Barker thing. So I went back and got it. I knew Jim checked in the Ramblers Club every night about 10.30. I waited till then and I went there. You shouldn't have come looking for me, Anna. I can't be seen with you. The cops might be following you. They're not. I checked. You've got to stay away from me. I thought at least you'd fix bail for me, Jim. 
too risky. Who did? Ed. <laughs> no kidding. He must be a pretty good guy at that. What happens now? You go home and stay there. I got no home. Ed took the girls and left. If things had worked out, it would have been different. I'll let you have 10, 15, but that's all I can spare. Don't make it a habit. You keep it. Now, look, don't start whining, baby. You went into this with your eyes wide open. I don't like women who whine. I can still make things pretty bad for you, Jim. <laughs> yeah, I thought of that. Sam! Yeah? If Barbara you... Shut up, you. Yes, Jim. When was it that someone tried to knock over Barker's safe, Sam? Last Sunday night. Why? You uh, happen to remember where I was that night? Yeah, sure. You were here from nine to closing. I see. I get the picture. Okay, Sam, thanks. Anytime. Anytime at all. Bad week for me, Jim. Looks like I'm a loser. Yeah, looks like it. I'm a poor loser. I don't know how. Well, the first time's always the toughest. Better go now. I don't know how. Now, look, don't try pulling one of your fits on me, baby. I know you. I know. I got something of yours, Jim. Go on, Anna. Take off. Another minute you're going to be balling. Go home and do it. I got no home. Go on. Beat it, I said. Sure. Sure, I'll beat it. But before I go, don't you want your gun back? My gun? Oh, yes. Well, put it on the table. I said put it on the table. What's the matter with you? Did you hear me? And I... I heard you, Jim. You have just heard an actual confession. This case history of the woman referred to as Anna Carlson is a matter of documented record. To protect the legal rights of this woman, names and places were changed or deleted. Technical advice for confession comes from the Office of the Director of Corrections, Department of Corrections, State of California. In a moment, you will again hear Anna Carlson. Anna R. Carlson was arrested in Los Angeles County, State of California, and tried and convicted under Section 190 PC on charge of murder in the first degree. On a recommendation for leniency by the jury, she was sentenced to life imprisonment in the California Penal Institution for Women at Corona. Now, Anna Carlson. Maybe someone, somewhere, will be helped by this broadcast. I know a lot of women can put themselves in my place. I saw them in bars and nightclubs running away from the things that really count. It's funny, I had to ruin my life to find out what I really wanted. I guess what every woman really wants, a home and kids, a husband. I know it sounds pretty ordinary to a lot of women, but I had a long time to think about it. A very long time. Ed and the girls live in Stockton. Minda's married now, and I'm a grandmother. I sure would like to see her, my granddaughter. Maybe someday they'll bring her to visit me. I don't know. <laughs> This has been Confession, transcribed statements of actual crimes. These true tragedies are brought to you each week as an NBC Radio Network production in an effort to stem the nation's forward march of crime. Credit for this broadcast goes to our cast. Paul Fries, Eve McVeigh, Barney Phillips, Virginia Gregg, Anthony Barrett. Writer Lou Russoff. Music Michael Samogi. Script supervision Warren Lewis. Direction Homer Canfield. John Wall speaking. Confession, a Canfield Lewis creation, came to you from California. Tonight, it's Adventure with Barry Craig on NBC.